What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna take a look at lead code problem number 1661, average time of process per machine. This one is marked as easy, let's get straight into it. So we only have one table called activity that contains a machine ID, process ID, activity type, and timestamp. So it shows the user activities for a factory website. Timestamp is of low re representing current time in seconds, where start means a machine started a process at a given timestamp and end means that machine ended that process at the given timestamp. The start timestamp will always be before the end timestamp, so we can calculate the difference between start and end and get that process time. Because our task is that there's a factory website that has several machines, each running the same number of processes, and we should write an SQL query to find the average time each machine takes to complete a process. The time to complete a process is the end timestamp minus the start timestamp. So it already tells us how to calculate it exactly. The average time is calculated by the total time to complete every process on the machine divided by the number of processes that were run. The resulting table should have the machine ID along with the average time as processing time, which should be rounded to three decimal places. The query result format is in the following example. We have machine ID 0, 1 and 2 and the average processing times. So to sum it up, we have machines running processes in a factory. We have a start and end time for each of these processes. And we want to calculate the average time each machine takes for their processes. A machine has several processes and that's where we come in. <laughs> we should calculate that. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So what I don't like about this input table, even though it's just one, which makes it easier usually, we have start and end as activity type as a column. And it would be much nicer to have start time and end time as separate columns because that way we could just subtract them from each other and get the difference. So I want a column that says start timestamp and end timestamp maybe. And in order to do that, um, Gonna do a self-join and how that looks is what we're gonna look into right now. So let's select machine ID, process ID, then we want the start time and end time. And then we're probably gonna calculate the difference between these. So I'm just placing some placeholders here with the name and I'm gonna take care of the self join. So we only have activity, so we're gonna call one A and one B. And what I want to achieve is have the table A, the imaginary table A be the start of the process and B be the end of the process. And that way, if we join based on the machine ID and process ID, we can take the timestamp from table A, which should be at the start time, and then the timestamp from table B, which should be the end time, and that way get these two columns. And then from these columns, we can calculate the difference and know how long each process takes, and then it's just about taking the average of that, which should be pretty straightforward. But let's focus on that join. So we're self-joining activity by joining activity A on activity B, and it should be the same machine ID, of course, when we join that. And it also should be the same process ID. Okay, so that way we make sure we look at the same machine to get the start and end time and the same process. What we need to do right now is to introduce a where filter. We could add to the join condition, but it works the same way and I think the way the question is stated, it makes sense to use where here, but it doesn't really matter. Anyways, we want to make sure that in A we're looking at start time. So we're gonna say activity type should be start here. And B should be activity type end. So we get the end timestamp. Okay, hope I don't have any typos in here. But let's fill out the placeholders. So if a.activity type is start, we only get start timestamps. So if we say a.timestamp is our starting time and b.timestamp is our end time, 
that should work. And then as a time difference, we can subtract one from the other to get the time difference. Let's run that and see what it gives us. Machine ID is ambiguous because it is in both A and B. So let's just take a.machine ID and a.process ID. Should be the same anyways because that is in our join condition. And that should do the trick. Okay, so we have uh, machine ID, process ID, start time and end time. End time is always higher than start time, so that seems to work. And then the time difference being around 0.8 seems like there are more exact values behind what we're shown here because they have very uh, a lot of, lot of decimal places, is that how you say it? But our task is to round them in the end anyways. So what we want to do now is we just basically want that difference and now take the average of that. So I'm gonna wrap an average function around that difference and make sure I group by machine ID and not process ID. Because in the output result table, if we take a look at the left result table here, it should just be machine ID and then the average processing time across all processes. So let's remove process ID here. Let's remove start time and end time because we already have the difference and see if that works. Let's rename difference to processing time because that is what the field should be called in the output. And let's see if that runs. So we get three values, one for zero, one, and two. All we need to do is round that to three decimal places. So let's use the round function, our value or calculation, comma, and the number of decimals we want. That would be three in this case, and that should do the trick once again. I don't think we're required to order anything, so that is accepted. And if we submit that, it's also an accepted submission, perfect. So that is already it for that problem. I think it's a nice one. It's a bit tricky to get into the column format, but once you have that, it's pretty straightforward. If you want to study more lead code database SQL problems, make sure to stick around and subscribe to the channel maybe. And if you want to study per difficulty, I have playlists for you to do just that. So, you have, so I have a lead code easy SQL database problem playlist, medium and hard, so you can mix and match and take, take a guess at some problems exactly with the difficulty you're aiming at. Anyways, that's been it for me today. See you all next time.